Hi, Shamai, and welcome to another midweek uh, reflection challenge, conversation starter, however we want to call it. Um, I hope your week's going well. I think it's going to be a long one today. Uh, you've probably looked at the video and, and already gasped, but so uh, perhaps pause, get yourself a cup of tea or something stronger, um, because we're going to be here for a while, as indicated by the size of my mug. Both. Um, so uh, let's get started. There's a lot um, going on in the news at the moment. Uh, whilst some of us were uh, coping with the lockdown restrictions, um, along came the Dominic Cummings affair to raise blood pressures. And then in, across the pond in America, we see the, the, the George Floyd death, murder um, by a police officer. Uh, raising the questions of of prejudice, discrimination, persecution, both in America and across the world, and this is combined with the the everyday obscenities of inequality that we face. So, um, a lot to take on board, and maybe you've been feeling angry recently. I know I have. Um, and it was interesting to read just now, um, a bishop in America, Bishop Marianne Edgar Bude, an Anglican bishop in Washington, say that she was angry, that she was outraged um, after President Trump um, ordered a group of peaceful protesters to be, um, to be dispersed with tear gas and rubber bullets and flash grenades so he could visit um, her church and hold up a Bible and give his uh, violent rhetoric. Uh, as she said, he shared a message antithetical to the teachings of Jesus. There's a lot to be angry about at the moment. Um, and the scriptures, in fact, tell us that, that anger is a valid response to um, injustices. We see that in the actions of Jesus. We see that in the Psalms. We hear that in um, the teachings in the, in the New Testament, such as in Ephesians 4, where we're told, tell your neighbour the truth. In Christ's body, we are all connected to each other. So when you lie to others, you end up lying to yourself. Go ahead and be angry. You do well to be angry, but don't use your anger as fuel for revenge. And don't stay angry. Don't go to bed angry. Don't give the devil that kind of foothold on your life. So what do we do with our anger? Um, where does it go? Where do we channel it? Well, when it comes to the George Floyd incidents um, and how we might respond to that, there's, there's several things we can do. Some people uh, might choose to donate to the Minnesota Freedom Fund, um, which is bailing out uh, many of the black protesters which are, who have been arrested in Minnesota. Um, you might want to uh, educate yourself more on, on issues of prejudice in this country. Um, you might want to read the book by um, Rennie Ed Ed Edo Lodge, um, who is um, a woman of colour um, and British. And uh, her book's called Why I'm No Longer Talking to White People About Race. Um, so you might want to read that and reflect upon the prejudice that still exists in, in the UK. You might want to pause for eight minutes and 46 seconds, the, um, the time which George Floyd had his uh, um, neck being crushed um, by the police officer, um, and think about how we can make our, our desire and demand for justice to be heard and to be enacted. Um, or, of course, you might want to respond in other ways, creatively or through prayer. And I thought I'd just offer two examples of that now. Um, uh, we will hear from um, a few words from Martin Luther King Jr. later. But um, for now, we're going to hear some words. Um, it's a, a hymn, in fact, but it could be read as a poem um, by Gary Hopkins, who was a, a Methodist preacher, a member of the LGBTQ+ community um, who's offered a, a hymn of, of anger that I think wonderfully expresses um, um, an, a sentiment of anger and, and desire for justice at the moment. 
And then we're going to hear a, a prayer from Nadia Bowles Weber, who many of you will know is a, a Lutheran pastor in America. And so she's responding to what's going on there. Um, these are just some of the many responses we might have with our anger at the moment. So from Gary Hopkins first. God, our anger at injustice swells from deep within our core. Anger at decision makers for oppression we deplore. Anger at the ones who lead us for indifference to the poor. Anger at the lies, deception, selfishness that we abhor. Systems made to serve the privileged, tightly gripped by those with power, stripping others of life's chances, edicts from an ivory tower. God, our anger fires within us. Bring your justice, liberate. Come and shatter worldly systems. Take the least and make them great. Channel grief and anger in us. Let us be your voice and hands. Spirit, guide our justice seeking. Take us where your love demands. Christ destroys the powers and forces, chains of bondage, unjust strife, not by might and raging violence, but a sacrificial life. How long, maker, word and spirit, till such evils are reversed? How long till your reign is finished and the last become the first? Hear us, God, we pray for justice. Hear our cries for those oppressed. Hear our voices never silenced till the least are truly blessed. And that can be sung to Abbots Lee or Scarlet Ribbons or other tunes with that meter. And now a hymnal, I think that's the right word, music. And now a prayer from uh, Nadia Bowles Weber. God, whose name has been used to enslave those who bear your image. God, whose name has been used to steal this land and kill those who bear your image. God, whose name was called upon by Moses and Miriam and Martin Luther King Jr. and Sojourner Truth, Breonna Taylor, George Floyd. God, who raised up prophets to speak truth to power and poets to speak truth to stupid. We call on your holy name to give us what we need to undo what has been done in your name. We call on your name to bring your fierce mercy upon us and remove our complacency and our complicity. We call on your name to heal the wounds of those whose daily reality we do not understand. We call on your name to give us a holy curiosity about what being black in America and the UK is really like, Lord. We call upon your name to free us from our cherished notions of being good that keep us from hearing this truth. We call on your name to give us this day our daily truth, our daily humility, our daily rage, our daily hope. America is burning, Lord. May it be a cleansing Holy Spirit fire. Guide us to believe that the true name of God is stronger than what has been done in God's name. Come, Holy Spirit. Amen. Just some of our responses to anger. If you have other ways, um, and I encourage us all to reflect upon how we can raise our voices um, now and in the in the upcoming months um, at this time of, of the kind of world that we want to see uh, rebuilt um, when we we're back to some semblance of normality, then then do give that some thought and do send in any ideas to me or, or speak with your elder, um, because I think that's significant at this time. So anger is a is one response to what's going on. Um, and one uh, frequent bedfellow to anger is actually humour. Humour is a way to uh, to bring down the powerful, to show them as the fools that they, they actually are. Um, if you saw Ian Hislop's blistering attack uh, on the Cummings Affair on Have I Got News For You last uh, week, uh, you would have seen that uh, shown very effectively. And I recommend it, watching it if you haven't seen it. Or another really incredible... Um, funny, heartbreaking, very powerful use of humour uh, being used to channel anger and, and fight injustice is, Nanette, uh, uh, is Hannah Gadsby's Nanette. Hannah Gadsby is an Australian comedian and she, um, in, in that particular set, she talks about um, abuse and misogyny and homophobia um, and does so through her, her comedy set, which won the Edinburgh Fringe Festival Award uh, along with a slew of others. And I and I really recommend it. It's a, it's a very powerful and fascinating 
um, often funny, often heartbreaking watch. That's on Netflix. So if you've got Netflix, I do recommend that. Um, but if you don't have Netflix, um, you might want to seek humour in other ways. And one uh, avenue of that is the haikus you wrote. So last week you had the birds um, and I saw them outside Castle Square today uh, and they just look amazing. So um, thanks again for, for to Sue and to Simon, to, to Marcia, Susan Thomas and everyone who was involved in, in creating those birds and putting those flocks, um, I've got to be careful how I say that, up in front of Castle Square um, and Church House. They look amazing. They're a real show the church is alive, that the spirit is still moving. And they'll be sent on, as, as you know, to the some of our refugee communities, with, along with a gift and a card saying, explaining the birds and, and reminding them that we uh, pray for them and, and ask God to bless them. But uh, this week, when I thought we couldn't get any better with our challenges or, or, or live up to that level, you have surpassed yourselves. The haikus have been incredible. Um, I have laughed out loud, I have welled up, perhaps lockdown's getting to me, um, but uh, the haikus have just been fab. Uh, some of them, as I say, have been uh, a complete masterclass in humour in such a short time. Um, we had so many that I'm not going to read them all out now. We're going to print them out, and so you'll be able to get them when you, when you get uh, this week's sermon and newsletter. We're going to have uh, some of the, well, all of the haikus we've got so far. Um, printed out. If you don't get that, you can access this on this website or you might be emailed. Um, and we're hoping eventually to, to create kind of a book, a record of the church in lockdown because some of our creative output has been incredible and needs to be recorded for um, austerity and uh, perhaps fundraising, some more fundraising. So that's to come. We will be asking people to illustrate some of these haikus. So when you get your list, if you are a a cartoonist, an artist, uh, if you want to start um, doing some kind of uh, artistic response to these haikus, we might include those, well we will, any we receive, we will include those in any book pamphlet we create. But for now, I just thought I'd read a couple um, so you know the kind of, kind of quality that we've had. Uh, this first one questions the very nature of haikus themselves. Never heard of them. Five, seven and five again. Have I succeeded? I like that one. Um, another one um, from someone who sent in probably about 30, and this was her favourite, and I can see why, one of my favourite Bible stories as well, goes like this. Drunk guests at wedding. Finish the booze too early. Cool guy makes some wine. Amazing. Um, here's one for Trinity Sunday, this Sunday. Uh, World creating God, once a man in Galilee, now in you and me. Love that. Um, and one that refers to the situation in America at the moment. For the sorrowing, God's love give you his comfort, balm in Gilead. Um, just amazing, amazing. So you'll see more of these, you'll, you'll meet, read uh, more of these uh, this coming week. But for now, for this week's challenge, and uh, just give me a sec. That's better. I was feeling a little uh, underdressed there. So, this week's challenge. Apparently, uh, in normal times, we only wear between 20 and 50% of our wardrobe ever, uh, which is quite a damning statistic. Um, and we might want to think about how, what clothes we buy, about the effects of fast fashion, you know, globally. There's a, there's a lot to, to reflect upon there. But for now, as I say, anger and humour. I think uh, it would be good to cheer ourselves up by getting out the clothes we're not wearing at the moment. So apparently um, we're only wearing about 3% in the pandemic of clothes that we're wearing. And on Sunday uh, on the Castle Square conference call, a couple of individuals said, well, as it's Sunday, I decided to wear a skirt. Um, and I happened to say I was doing the same. So, uh, People, I think we like to dress up for certain occasions. Uh, certainly, I would say for myself, I have been wearing 3% of my wardrobe. Generally, a pair of swimming trunks and one of my t-shirts that I keep uh, recycling until it starts to get a little bit whiffy. So, now is the chance for us to, uh, to have a look through and get something else out to cheer up the church community. So the challenge this week then is to take a photograph 
of you wearing some item of your wardrobe that you wouldn't normally wear day to day at the moment uh, and perhaps doing an interesting activity with it. For example, uh, you might want to put on your tux while you're mowing the lawn or I'll tell you what, rather than tell you examples, why don't I show you? Maybe you could wear your Christmas clothes at breakfast. You might want to do your housework, dressed in your favourite dance gear. It's not even plugged in. Or maybe you just throw on whatever you find first in the wardrobe and take a photo of you just lying around. Well, I hope that gives you some idea of what you might do, but your imaginations are much bigger and brighter and better than mine, so um, go for it. Uh, let's see what your wardrobes and your creativity might produce. So that is this week's challenge then, to take a, a photograph of you wearing clothing you're not normally day-to-day -day wearing at the moment um, and send it in to the usual places, to Facebook, to the WhatsApp group, to me personally by email. Um, unless you say you don't want it shared in next week's video, one of these, uh, we will do. So unless you you don't want it shared, unless you say, please do not share this, we will take that as, as consent that you do. And if I've uh, forgotten to say anything else I should, uh, Bethan will put something here about GDPR, but I think I've covered it. So uh, that's almost it for this week. We we continue to to face what's going on in the world and to question how can we raise our voices for justice and peace and equality in our communities and beyond. And in the meantime, let's uh, spread uh, some images of love and laughter to those in our communities. With that in mind, um, I thought it was uh, appropriate to end with uh, a few sentences from one of uh, Martin Luther King Jr's speeches, which I think is uh, apposite and uh, hopeful for today. We have before us the glorious opportunity to inject a new dimension of love into the veins of our civilization. There is still a voice crying out in terms that echo across the generations, saying, love your enemies, bless them that curse you, pray for them that despitefully use you, that you may be called the children of your Father which is in heaven. This love might well be the salvation of our civilization. This is why I'm so impressed with the motto freedom and justice through love, not through violence, not through hate, no, not even through boycotts, but through love. It is true that as we struggle for freedom in America and beyond, we will have to boycott at times. But we must remember as we boycott that a boycott is not an end within itself. It is merely a means to awaken a sense of shame within the oppressor and challenge his false sense of superiority. But the end is reconciliation. The end is redemption. The end is the creation of the beloved community. It is this type of spirit and this type of love that can transform opposers into friends. It is this type of understanding goodwill that will transform the deep gloom of the old age into the exuberant gladness of the new age. It is this love which will bring about miracles in the hearts of men and women. Go well and have a good loving week.